So you guys made it pretty clear that you wanted a part two for the Apex main stereotypes video. Ashton, make me tingle. Ashton, 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 make, Ashton make, make me tingle. Tingle, tingle. Ashton, make me pringle. All right, all right, all right. I hear you loud and clear. And if you want a part three and a finale to this series of Apex Legends main stereotypes, then get this video to 3,000 likes and drop in the comment section down below. Ashton, time to get groovy. And we will finish off this series with a bang. Galore. Bangalore. Yeah, funny. So to start off this episode of your Apex main stereotypes, we're going to start with a legend that everyone has been asking for on this series so far. I know you've all wanted this one legend for so long now, but don't worry, finally we're going to address Fuse. Fuse is the legend we're going to be first addressing in this episode and Fuse mains are a very rare breed. When you find them in the wild, you just have to appreciate their natural beauty or lack of really because Fuse is if you, yeah, Fuse kind of weird. But if there has ever been one stereotype in the whole of Apex Legends that I've been 100% confident in, it is this stereotype of Fuse. All dedicated Fuse mains, those guys that play Fuse every single day, every single game, regardless of if they're playing one game or 50 games those players are always above the age of 30 they have at least two children a wife a nine to five working job they have probably the same haircut as fuse and they just love a beer they love to kick it back in their recliner and play some apex legends and sure these guys might die five six seven times off the drop without getting a kill but that moment where they get that spray on someone deal some damage maybe even get a knock that is the absolute pinnacle of their game in career. They have never felt euphoria this good in their entire life. Now these same fuse mains have some very typical tropes that they all seem to do in game and they might have a peacekeeper, a master for any good close range weapon and they're in a one versus one situation with you but they have 100 million IQ and instead of shooting these powerful up close weapons they just decide to knuckle cluster because de deploying me knuckle cluster sounds funny. The only other thing I have to say about fuse mains is please don't ever change we all love you. You're absolutely the heart and soul of this game. Now, I won't lie to you guys, as a Pathfinder main myself, it does hurt a little bit to talk about this metallic stallion of a man, but we have to be honest about our stereotypes, and even when it comes to our own mains, we just have to put our hands up and say, hey, some of us Pathfinder mains, okay, let's be honest, all of us Pathfinder mains love to just grapple into a full team of three, or better yet, zipline into a full team of three, and quite often it goes something like this. Grappling. I have been downed. Now, despite our aggressive playstyle and tendencies to go 50 to 100 meters ahead of the rest of our team, Pathfinder mains are pretty nice people. They all tend to be really, really nice in the chat, especially if you have a random Pathfinder. They always seem to come from Sweden or somewhere and just be the most polite, happy people you've ever met in your life. And honestly, I think the secret behind all of this is that Pathfinder mains are very much like Pathfinder himself. We're all quite happy, a little bit funny, happy and excited to be playing the game, but also ridiculously clumsy like we do the stupidest stuff and no other legend can come close to the amount of stupid plays that us Pathfinders make. Something I'm sure all of you can relate on when it comes to the Gibbopotamus Prime is the fact that there's two types of them. There's the ranked version and the pubs version. Now the pubs version, when you see a Gibby running around, it's it's pretty pretty straightforward usually. They, they, they don't know which way is up, down, left, right. They're kind of just wandering around. You, you kind of feel sorry for them in a way. They, they almost look a little bit cute with the way that they're just trying so hard. But you know, it's just, it's just over for them because they're just gonna get shot from every angle on the map. But bless them, they try their best. But when when it comes to ranked and you see a Gibby rocking up, you know it's no joke because Gibbies in ranked are probably the hardest character to fight. While they do get focused the most instead of any other character, I don't know why that could be, it's honestly probably the scariest prospect going into a bubble fight with a good Gibby because like I always say, Gibbies are just very underrated. Gibby is an amazing character so don't underestimate the big fella. 
despite the fact that I'm the one telling you guys the main stereotypes, I need to ask you a question real quick. Why do all Bangalore mains have ants in their pants? I mean, they just can't stop moving. I, I promise you, all Bangalore mains have auto sprint permanently enabled. They only have one key on their keyboard, and that's W. They just can't stop moving. They're always zigzagging. They, they can't go in a straight line. That passive ability just turns them into Usain Bolt, apparently. And even Octane can't catch up most of the time. Bangalore mains are both the most aggressive and passive characters ever. They will go fully in one versus three charging at a team, but the moment they take any damage, they hit that big old U-turn and just zigzag, hurdle over five obstacles and just run into cover 50 miles away and if you're thinking about chasing them then don't worry because they're already into the next map rotation by this point like i just don't know what it is about bangalore mains they just love to run but when you put that to the side the other things they love to do is smoke grenade inside buildings which is just the most annoying thing for everyone involved especially if you're on the bangalore's team and you're on a controller like i know some of you will probably be frowning and sighing at the fact i just said that but controller doesn't get aim assist through smoke and I'm not gonna lie as a controller player when my friendly Bangalore is smoking next to me it does put a sour taste in my mouth. But another thing Bangalore mains love to do is just randomly throw their ult down when they take 10 damage and better yet they often throw it in the wrong direction so they'll be running backwards they'll throw it down and the ult will come down on top of them instead of on top of the enemy. Like please you already have an amazing passive ability where you can run away faster if that's what you want to do you don't have to ult yourself at the same time. But one thing all Bangalore mains have in common is our unified love and the yes I said ah because I do have 10,000 kills on Bangalore as well but we all share a unified love for the digi threat optic choose choose between one or the other you can't have both replicator touching down now, the Digi Threat is one of those optics that some people like, some people hate. But if you're a Bangalore main, there's no question. This is the best optic in the game. It's the best item in the game. You know, if vaults could be filled with seven Digi Threats, then that would be a Bangalore's heaven. Honestly, they just just take all the Digi Threats. Even put them in your inventory because it's, it's better than ammo at this point for a Bangalore main. But yes, finally, last but certainly not least, is the one you have all been waiting for. Finally, we will address the elephant in the room, Wraith. Wraith, Wraith, Wraith. We all know the Wraith stereotype. Load into the game. TTV Wraith goes down instantly, leaves. Wah, video over. But I think it's unfair on Wraith mains to say that because Wraith mains can be some of the most skilled, mechanically and mentally skilled players in the game. And I think it's unjust to just put them all under this one stereotype of angry TTV players who leave the game the moment they get not. Without Wraith mains, we wouldn't have such amazing mechanics in the game as phase and quit, zipline dancing, tactical dashboarding, and of course, who could forget weapon inspect spamming? Where would we be without that? But seriously, like I say, most good players in this game tend to be Wraith players, and that's mostly because of the fact that one, she has a great set of abilities, and two, she's just pretty cool in general, and gamers tend to like cool, attractive lady characters. I, I said it. So don't worry, Wraith mains, if people are bullying you and taking the mickey out of you, then don't worry about it, because it's just because we all know you're probably quite a good player player and realistically we're not going to be quite as good when we're just playing as a giant refrigerator zipping through the sky. Don't forget guys for the finale of this series to happen this video has to hit 3000 likes and you have to comment Ashton time to get groovy with it and we'll see what can happen but until then I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one goodbye.